Hey everybody, I got one of those uh, 9 foot 5 werewolves from Home Depot this year. I'm going to be using it next year. And one of the things I wanted for it was a moon. Now, if you go on mine, there's not very many tutorials for moons, uh, especially outdoor moons. Uh, you can buy them, but they're like $300, which is a lot of money. Uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to make a moon for a lot cheaper. It doesn't take much time, and it's pretty easy to do with regular tools. When I made the moons earlier this week, I did a prototype two foot one with a old culvert pipe that I had laying around. And then I made a four foot one that I really liked with another culvert pipe that I had laying around. Now I realized most people don't have culvert pipes laying around. Uh, so I figured out ways to make them using cheap materials that people can buy without too much trouble. Um, you can make them anywhere from maybe a foot up to four feet without too much trouble. If you want to make a small moon, you can get like a Home Depot bucket cut off a section of it uh, for the way what we're going to be doing. If you want to make a larger moon, like up to a two, two foot moon, Home Depot sells drip trays for water heaters. They get, go anywhere from 22, 24, 26, up to like I think 32 inches across. Uh, you can use that to make a large moon. Or if you wanted to make a uh, almost four foot moon yourself, if you've ever seen those plastic kiddie pools uh, that you can get, they're hard plastic, they're about eight inches deep. They're 48, 46 inches across. You can use one of those. I'll have links to all this stuff down in the description that you can check out for different supplies. All right, for what we're doing today, I've got three different things I wanted to show you. We're only, only going to use one. This is a water heater drip tray that's made out of plastic. This is one that's made out of metal. And this is a uh, potted plant holder put some under a potted plant and it keeps the water from going out onto the ground. Any of these would be perfect for a two foot moon. I'm gonna show you how to, how to make a two foot moon today. The materials that we're gonna be using for the moon that we're making today is this drip pan, string lights, you can buy these online, you can get them from Amazon and depending upon what type of string lights you get and how long you get, they're gonna be at diff different prices. Uh, for what I'm using today, I'm using a uh, string light with 39 foot string that's multicolor. That way I can change the colors. You're going to be using, needing a shower curtain with a picture of a moon on it, some corrugated plastic, some tape, and that's pretty much all the materials that we're going to need for this. Okay, with this drip pan from Home Depot, when you get it, it's not a hole on the side. And a hole is a good thing to have. You're going to get the string lights. You're going to unwind the string lights. And you're going to run the string lights through the hole. And we're going to uh, tape the string lights to the back in a circular, like, spiral pattern. When we're done, the battery pack is going to be on the outside, so you have easy access to it. The lights are going to be on the inside. <coughs> when you're doing this, Make sure that you put batteries in. You can turn the lights on. That way you can see it as you're actually doing it. Okay, first thing I'm doing is putting the lights in on the back in a spiral pattern. A uh, couple things to think about when you do this. I'm using a lot of lights, a very long light string. You might not need a light string this long. Uh, but you want to make sure that you get plenty of light. As I'm doing this, these lights have a top and the bottom. I'm making sure that the top part of the light is facing up when I tape it down. Uh, the other thing you want to do when you're getting the lights is consider, consider where you're going to be using your moon. If you're using the moons outdoors, the lights you want to get are, you want to make sure that they're rated for the outdoors. Uh, some aren't rated for outdoors. If they get wet, they'll quickly corrode. Other ones have a little bit of a plastic or rubber coating that protect them from the elements. Also, when you're thinking about the battery case, you want to make sure the battery case is also rated for the outdoors which means that it'll have a gasket to keep water from getting into the batteries. Okay, that's probably the hardest part of this whole project is uh, putting all the wire down and taping it down. As you can see, I've got a lot of tape in here, but the nice thing about using these string lights, they come with a remote control and you can change the color. So you want green lights, you can have green lights, you want white lights, you can have white lights, you want red lights, you can have red lights, you want purple lights, you want blue lights, you can control the lights. And if you want to do some different effects, like you can make it uh, dimmer or more brighter, you can also have like a fading into different colors. Of course, if you're doing a moon, 
probably just want one solid color, but if you're using it for other purposes, it's kind of a cool effect. As I was doing this, I used Gorilla Tape. I just took out the Gorilla Tape, cut it, like uh, basically ripped it into strips of four, and then put it down. When you put the Gorilla Tape in here, you wanna make sure you stick it on there really, really well. You don't want this coming loose like uh, after you have everything all put together. So what I will do is after I turn this off, I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna press down on all these white strips one more time, just to make sure they're adhered very well. One of the things you'll notice here uh, with this hole, I'm actually hanging this inside. I already got my moon for the outside and everything, but I've got a wall where I've got a lot of, a lot of my Halloween stuff and this will look pretty cool on there. So I actually set this up by putting a hole back here where I'm gonna be able to hang it onto the wall. Since I'm doing this inside, I'm not worried about having this big hole here. If you do this outside, you might be worried about bugs and stuff uh, crawling in. So you might wanna put some sort of a plug here. You can use tape, something like that. Also, when I put the battery pack on here, I'm still gonna be using Velcro with uh, glue on the back of it. I'll put a piece on here and a piece on here and that will hold it in place for me. And then whenever I need to change the batteries, it'll be really easy to do. All right, now that we got the lights in here, we're gonna put a base on it. And what I'm gonna be using is I'm gonna be using a corrugated pl uh, plastic. You can get this from Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, this is a 30 by 36 inch sheet, which is perfect for this uh, size moon. For the 48 inch moon that I did before, uh, I got a four, foot by eight foot sheet and I use that for the other moon. Now, when you do this, uh, there's a couple of different types of plastic that they have there. This is cheap, this was uh, 11 bucks or 12 bucks for the 30 by 36 inch uh, piece. They have a lot of other plastics, but the other plastics get to be very expensive. They have plastic glass and other things. Uh, and this lets enough of the light through that I'm happy with this. However, if you have the money and you don't mind spending it, you might want to go with something that's not that's a little bit less opaque than this. That way, it, your moon will be a little bit brighter. I'm happy with the brightness of this, but that's something for you to consider. All right, when I cut this, it's very simple. Uh, this plastic's pretty easy to cut. Plexiglass and some other types of uh, plastic aren't as easy to cut. I can actually cut these with uh, scissors or a razor blade. Other types of plastic, you need special tools. And it's real simple, get a marker, Go around the edge. Get your circle, get a pair of shears, cut it, and we'll go from there. <laughs> when you're cutting out the circle, you can use shears. Shears will work well. However, it takes a little bit of time. It can be annoying. If you have the proper type of tools, you can go a lot faster. Uh, this is a uh, vibrating saw that will rip through this and take only take a minute or so. Okay, so I've got this cut out now. Uh, the circle is probably a tiny bit larger than the lip of the uh, pan. I'm okay with that. We're gonna be putting something over this that's so gonna cover it. So if it's a tiny bit bigger, you're good. If you cut it too small, that kind of messes things up. So it's better to be a little bit too big than too small here. Uh, the way I'm gonna attach this to here, so I'm gonna do a couple. Uh, for this project, I'm gonna be using a glue, like a hot glue gun and glue. I'm gonna attach it that way. And then I might get a, a couple of uh, screws, drill a couple holes, put a couple of screws in through the lip of the pan, uh, just to give it a little bit of extra uh, support. If I'm doing this outside, I would definitely be using a combination of glue and screws. You can also use like uh, liquid nails or something like that, something that'll cause a good contact between the plastic and the pan and it won't come loose when you don't want it to. And just to give me an idea how bright this is and what this looks like through this type of plastic, it's covering up right now, it's completely dark in here, and this still don't give me the type of brightness I want. Now, if this is not bright enough for you, you might want to consider a different type of material. There are different types of plastic and everything, but like I said, they tend to be a little bit more money. All right, so I'm gonna be using high glue. Uh, Honestly, when you put this on here, like I said, you can use hot glue, you can use screws, you can use uh, liquid nails, something like that. You could even, if you really wanted to, now it, get some Gorilla Tape or duct tape, put that around the outside, or I'll be covering up so nobody will be able to see it. Uh, 
That's another possibility. Now, a quick trick with the glue gun. When I put down the glue, trick I learned a while ago, is if you don't want to have to sit there and wait for the glue to uh, cool off, just get a little bit of water, spritz it with water, that'll cool off for you. Put your thing into place, and it'll quickly adhere. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my hand here, I'll lift up a little bit, put a little glue in, I'm gonna go around the whole edge, and I'm gonna glue on the whole thing. Okay, so I got the face glued and adhered to the uh, pan. What I'm doing next is I'm putting a shower curtain that has a picture of a moon on top of it. I'm gonna cut the moon out. This adds a little bit of texture and makes the moon look more like a moon. It's pretty cool because like it can make it different colors. And you can find a color that you think works for you. All right, so the shower curtain of the moon that I got is a very large moon. I'm just using a section of it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna cut enough so that it overlaps the sides, actually folds onto the back a little bit. And then I'm gonna use the glue gun to attach shower curtain to the back and get like a nice tight fit of the shower curtain and the moon look to it. All right, so I've got my moon cut out. It's not the cleanest cut, but it doesn't need to be because a lot of it's gonna be going towards the back here. What I'm gonna do is get the glue gun. I'm gonna figure out where the fabric's going to about. And I'll apply some glue, spray it with water, and pull it taut. And I'm just going to do this around the whole thing. This is another thing where spraying with water comes in handy. If you don't spray it with water first and try detaching the fabric to the glue without cooling it off, it'll burn your fingers. You don't burn your fingers when you wet it first. Right, one of the things I did not show on the other moon because I'm hanging that in the basement is how I would hang it if I was hanging it outside. If I'm hanging this outside, I'm going to get a couple of these hooks here. They uh, are open-ended hooks. You got the screws there. I would get two of those and I would drill a hole in the plastic right about here, another hole in the plastic right about here. And I would use like a, I would actually get a little bit of Gorilla Tape put it over where I was going to drill the hole on the each side, put it over on the outside, put some on the inside, and then I would drill through the tape and the plastic and then the tape on the inside. I'd leave the tape there. That gives it a little bit of extra strength to make sure it doesn't break. And I would screw these hooks into the pan. That way you've got two hooks, you're hanging it, and it will stay in one position. If you just put hang one hook from the top, it's going to be spinning on you. You don't want that. The two hooks will allow it to stay in one place. You can either use one string going from, uh, if you're hanging from trees, go from one tree to the other tree, and then just run the string through these hooks, or you can run a string from a tree to this hook, string from the other tree to this hook, and it'll keep it in place. Okay. So now I've got the sheet on top of it, pulled it taut. You can see what it'll look like during the daytime. And then you should also be able to see what it looks like at night. Okay, I've got the uh, sheet on now, it's in place. I've got my moon, you can see the texture in there, making it look more moonlight. You can change it different colors very easily. You can hang it, it's extremely lightweight. So you can hang it from uh, different things. When I hang this, I use a hundred pound fishing wire, but you can do, use different types of strings. And that's about it.